Hey, good morning, Eastern Oregon, and welcome to this January, this 27th version of AM Live on EOA, your connection to Eastern Oregon. How's it going this morning, man? What's up? <laughs> What's up, Tyler? Good morning. Yeah, it's cold out there, man. Man, it's freezing. I hate it, too. <laughs> I hate it so bad. <laughs> I know it's I terrible. When, when I get up and it's cold, it's like I can I can hear you whining all the way in Island City. <laughs> you, you didn't even know how I, I did not want to get out of my bed. <laughs> Cause I didn't have I don't keep the heat up real high because I like to sleep in the cold, you know? Yeah. But man, like getting up in the morning when it's this cold, I'm just like, nah, it's not the shower's a short walk away. Yeah. Thankfully. Yeah. I <clears throat> we remodeled our bathroom. Oh, I don't know. It's been about a year ago. And when I put the new, when I put the new plumbing in, it wasn't quite warm enough and it's still not quite, I mean, it's got one of those non scalding faucets, you know? And so it limits how warm you can get it. And some of these cold mornings is like, I got to get back in there and adjust that. Cause it's, it's not warm enough, man. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Definitely. I don't, I don't, I'm just not a fan of the cold. I, I, when, you know, like I have some metal in me and some old sports injuries that just don't cooperate very well. Yeah. Honestly, like yeah. I, I can feel it. Like my left shoulder hurts today. My left ankle. Yeah. It's mostly my left side of my body. You're, you're just a you're just a cold wimp and you're using sports injuries to cover for it. That's what I mean. It's, it's <laughs> I guess. Sure. <laughs> I mean, that's how you want to look at it. A San Diego kid, man. I, yeah, but I've been here since I was twelve. No, I, I, mean, I 11, know, I know, so, I, I mean, know. I'm pretty acclimated. Yeah, I, I know imagine. you. Are. Yeah. Well, cool. Um, wrestling yeah. last night for yep. LHS was cool. Hey, I took some pictures. Uh, we live streamed it, but hey, this this is one of my favorite pictures from last night. <laughs> Viral. I posted that on my Instagram and just typed "legend." Yeah. Yeah. Like, seriously, he he was he, he still. Showing up at rest, you know what I mean. And then last night I got, I took pictures of uh, LHS girls wrestling for the first time. Now, I, sorry, I don't know all their names, but our mom reached out to me last night and was like, uh, "Can you send me some pictures?" So I'm gonna send her some pictures, and she's gonna tag us and tag the the girls. But there are some. It was pretty fun last night. Like the girls really. We have 17 girls on the high school wrestling team. Wow, 17. Wow, it's so awesome! And and then varsity, we had duels again. This is so. This is their stud. Uh, I do know her. Her name's Delia uh, Golzo, and she's been wrestling for a long. Her, her sister was the first girl wrestler at Legrand High School. Wow! And then the, the guys, they didn't. It was really hard because uh, um, they they turned the lights off during varsity, and and there was a lot of forfeits. So. Last night, the varsity match only lasted about 20 minutes. Everything oh, really? else was JV and girls. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And then the night before, EOU finally broke the, the 10 game losing streak against C of I. And my favorite picture from that game, the, the men's game, is this <laughs> one right here. Um, Paul Pennington's back after an injury that he suffered on Halloween night against Gonzaga. Um, this was his second game back, and he's just, yeah, thank, or third game back. I'm sorry. He played Friday, Saturday, and then tonight. And then the the women's team won as well, and they should be getting votes. I said that to the CCC. They're not, they're not getting the votes they deserve right now. You got LC State is ahead of them in the polls as well as Southern. We split with Southern, and we beat LC State. So, uh, And then this is my favorite picture from that game. Cool. Yeah. Having a lot of fun taking pictures. It's 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 a blast. I saw in the video that you took of just the last 30 seconds of the game. That was cool. That yeah. was fun stuff. Yeah, that, that was actually like a four minute video. I just cut it all up. Oh, did you? Yeah. I started it like okay, so I started it as soon as we inbounded the ball, and then I ended it after Kemp's speech in the locker room but nobody's ever going to get to hear that yeah 
That's that's that that comes off. Nobody gets to hear that. That's <laughs> that's no, uh, no. It's spe- it's something right. That no, I'll yeah, just preserved because it's, it's kind of sacred. That, yeah, it yeah. is very sacred. Yeah, and it was it was awesome. But at the same time, it's just something that I just don't that doesn't need to be shared with people. It was yeah. really a special moment. It was cool. Well, very cool. Yeah, and it was it was just so fun to look them. You know, it I. I mean, I told, said, shared with you yesterday from the video, I couldn't tell for sure whether the last shot that C of I shot, whether it went in or not. And clearly it didn't right. by the way that, by the way, yeah, that it was lined was, up a yeah, little bit no. shorter and that goes in. It would have. Yeah. Yeah. No, but uh, just by the way, the EOU guys were bouncing around. It was like, nope, it didn't go in. And then finally I, I replayed it and looked at the scoreboard and it finally kind of got the, the whole picture it, it, so. was, it was a it was like set up perfectly um that was the best student section since covid by far yeah like it wasn't even close there there i mean the the student section was rocking and and it we haven't seen that since covid i mean honestly and and they were engaged it was like camo night and the cool thing is is the student section is all the other teams you had softball there. You had volleyball. Mm-hmm. You had baseball before the left. You had uh, track and field. You had everybody, lacrosse, and they were all just supporting. And and I don't even know if they knew how important this game is, like how how like huge this game was to the men's team. Yeah, like it, they're it, they're they sit right seven and seven right now. This was the number ten at the time team in the country that they're playing. And and a team they hadn't beat since Max's freshman year, huh. his very first conference game. Yeah, and and it, I don't know that the students knew how huge it was, but at the same time they showed up. I mean, it, it was it was awesome. It really was. <laughs> I was super impressed. <clears throat> oh, very cool, fun. Yeah, That's Dana, fun. what's up, my man and Bud? Yeah, Vera was an assistant in '72. Uh, what year did they win the state champion? Oh, that was football. Oh, he was an assistant on the football team. Yeah, bud. Yes. Yep. All righty. Well, hey, let's, uh, look at that cold day, man. It's kind of chilly out there. I'll bet you it's not that cold in San Diego. Probably like (laughs) about 65, 67 degrees. Yeah. Play some golf with Dana. All right. Well, here, let's let's take a listen to Gabe's forecast. Let's do it. Oh, he was heading into day on Thursday. Dense fog, I think, will be contained to the southeastern part of our region where it could be tough to clear. So temperatures should only be near freezing out that way. Warmer up into Pendleton as we will see increase in sunshine after that morning fog. Elsewhere, we'll see temperatures top out into the upper 30s to lower 40s as we see plenty of sunshine. Heading into the day on Thursday into La Grande, it does look like this. Abundantly clear to start into the mid 20s at nine o'clock. We'll be warming into the 30s in the afternoon. Southeasterly winds in the morning will be gusting up to 20 miles an hour. We'll see some increasing winds in the afternoon, shifting it completely to the south, up to 30 mile an hour wind gusts, bringing in those high cirrus clouds into our region. Heading into my short term forecast for the Grand Ron Valley, we'll top out at 36 degrees for Thursday, going into the lower 20s overnight as we see more increasing winds, up to 40 mile an hour gusts in areas that continues into Friday, keeping those high cirrus clouds into our region, which could make the sky appear a little bit hazy in the mix of that sunshine with temperatures slightly cooler. <laughs> uh, that kid he, is phenomenal. He, he does he does a lot better than we do. Like <laughs> yeah. He's, yeah. 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 Thank, thank goodness he's doing that now because I hate <laughs> talking about the weather for one thing and for another thing I suck at it. <laughs> no if any of you guys have not met gabe he's just he's such a passionate he's only 17 years old but my goodness he's serious i mean that entire that entire segment he produces himself so he's yeah. got a, we better stop sharing that because we're gonna yeah. lose him somebody's gonna yeah. hire him like he's they're, got gonna, a, they're he, gonna snipe him off of us he's got a green screen at home he edits the whole thing. You know, of course, we pay him for his efforts, and we appreciate uh, Nate Conklin as one of our sponsors uh, for that weather. Insurance. Yep. So, anyhow, very cool. Very well, cool. hey, well, hey. So, uh, President Tom Ensko from EOU is with us, and we're going to pull him into the show right after this commercial. 
EO Live is your connection to Eastern Oregon. Get the latest and most relevant news in two minutes or less with Megan Demersion on our evening news broadcast. We cover Eastern Oregon's weather daily with Gabe the EO Live Weather Kid with an extended forecast every Friday. Watch Dodsey on EO Live Sports to get the latest sports information and interviews with local coaches, athletes, and more. See Brent and Dodsey goof and gaff with local guests on EO Live's morning talk show, AM Live on EOA. We're available across the board, including Facebook, YouTube, Amazon Fire, and of course, our very own website, eolive.tv. We even have our own Roku channel with 24-7 live stream EOA content. You can also listen to our shows on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, and many other popular podcast apps. You can get everything all in one place with the EO Live app, available on Android, iOS, and the Amazon App Store. EO Live, your connection to Eastern Oregon. Hey, Tom, how are you? I'm doing fantastic. Good to be well, here. Well, good. good. Well, well, thanks. Welcome to the jungle. It's a little bit... <laughs> It's a little bit loose, but we're really glad that you take took the time to be with us this morning. And so, how are you doing with this cold? Well, I mean, <laughs> um, unlike Dotsie, and Dotsie, for not uh, liking um, doing the weather, you sure talk about it a lot this morning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love living in Eastern Oregon, so I love a crisp morning like this, frankly. Um but I also like the fact that uh, come summertime, we have some nice warm weather too. I like the season. So no, it's fantastic. Um, things are going, uh, all things considered really well at, at EOU. Um, I, I think it, I, I don't have to say how challenging it's been with uh, managing through COVID. And every time we think we're, we're kind of through it, we get another variants and su such and we have to manage through those dynamics but the team's just done fantastic and what i'm what i'm really proud of is that we haven't lost focus on our mission in terms of serving students and that's that's driven every decision we've made um it's why we were the only university in 2020 that actually had meaningful on campus um in person uh classes obviously not all of them but uh, we really pushed as far as we could while maintaining safety there. And then this year we learned from the prior year and, and have ex executed quite well. And what I love and, and kind of my gauge is when I have the opportunity, I go over to the Mountie Grill and uh, which is our, our food services court and such for our students and sit down with students. Uh, believe it or not, I'm an introvert, but um, I force myself to go, you know, I sit down and talk talk with students. I try to pick out students that I haven't engaged with and it gives me the opportunity to learn about their dreams and such and, and hear how things are going with them. And two-way students so far this year, and I've, I've done this a number of times, many, many times, um, they've been so happy with being back in class, uh, which is kind of ironic, right? Um, I kind of laugh, you know, we we <laughs> back in the day talking about skipping class. <laughs> right, and yeah. Right. <laughs> Students are begging. They're like, please, let's have in-person classes. Uh, so, um, yeah, all, all in all, things are going well. And Dodd, see, you were referencing, you know, the the athletics teams and such. And, and it's fantastic to have them out there competing. And, you know, we did what we could last year as well. Um, and to have our performing arts, uh, you know, we have a show coming up here in a couple of weeks. I'm excited for that. Uh, and, and again, we really worked to even provide those opportunities last year when um, most every other institution across the nation was, was not doing that. So pleased with what we've been able to do. Definitely not where we want to be given the pandemic, but uh, all things considered, I'm happy with, with how things are. So how, why do you think, Tom, you, were, you guys responded differently than a lot of the other institutions? I mean, what, what was kind of the, I don't know, what was the difference there? Um, you know, I'll be, I'll be candid. It, 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 uh, frankly starts with me. Um, and during, during, uh, disruptions like that, you know, we, we, whether you're in business or whatever, you face disruptions quite frequently and it's really easy, 
um, in the midst of disruption to forget about your values, your mission, you know, your strategy. Um, and it, ha and you know, it, it happens in any sector. Um, and this of course was a tremendous disruption, which none of us in our lifetimes have experienced. And so, um, I just kept reminding myself, the guy, we have our guide, we have our mission, uh, we have our strategy. We are an institution of access and being an institution of access, we have to make every decision thinking about the student first. And so as we, as we started those conversations, we had a lot of tough conversations, obviously a lot of different opinions about how we should move forward. And we have any university in the state of Oregon, our best position to go fully online. We have a great online um, offering as a university. But for those students that choose to come to our campus, we know why they do in a lot of ways. And, and uh, one of the fundamental aspects is that interface, that community that we build on campus. And we kept saying, we, we can't lose that. We've got to continue to serve those students. We've got to continue to pro provide them access. And so that just permeated through the organization and, and helped us through those tough conversations and, and helped us find that balance um, that we needed to as a university. Nice. That that Mountie Grill thing you were talking about, you they post that on social media. What do they call that? I forgot. It's like that you did like the ice cream thing, right? And then like, what what do they call that on social media? So I can let people know. Oh shoot, God, see, I can't I'm remember. Not, I, I I don't know. I, I mean, it's it's uh, Ron Wheeler's our our lead chef and leads that crew. Does a fantastic. Oh, job. the food always yeah. looks so good on their on their uh, Instagram. Yeah, I, I'll tell you, what, and it's open to the community. You can go up there. It's the best deal in town. Not that I want to compete with <laughs> the good no. businesses across <laughs> town, but, but uh, I'll tell you what, I'm always amazed. And, you know, I ask students, and, of course, we're all there at some time. We, you know, we find something to complain about, and they still talk about the food. And I'm, I just tell them, I wish you could go back to uh, when I was Easter. <laughs> <laughs> It is a, it's so different uh, in terms of, of the food, but yeah, we, uh, we've got a great, great uh, food services uh, partnership with Sodexo up here. Nice. Well, and the thing I hear, I, and I've heard this before from, from students that they, they love connecting with you and there is something very, you know, I don't know when you, when, when the, when the, the head guy is accessible and you see that in any business, whatever it might be. You know, if you, if there's a, I call it human engineering. If there's like, if you make a phone call and there's this outside company that is handling customer complaints or whatever the case might be, there's a lot of hopelessness that comes with that, you know? And so, so when you have contact with someone of influence, you know, I mean, it just, it, it's a great morale booster. I could imagine that during this time, that's been really significant. Yeah, it's, you know, it's a delicate balance, of course. Right. Um, because I have a lot of really important things that I need to focus on. And so finding that balance of being out there available, interfacing, listening, um, and helping that inform my context, it's really important to me, but I also you know, need, need to make sure I'm tending to the other parts of the business that, that are critical for our success. And, and so I'm always trying to gauge, you know, based on feedback or am I finding that right balance um, or am I spending too much, you know, for example, off campus in Salem advocating for the university, um, going out and doing donor visits or cultivating things with the community. Um, it's, uh, there's always a tension and frankly, um, uh, for me, it's always hard when I actually, and it, it really takes discipline because I love my family. Uh, I want to dedicate time to my family and be fully present for them. But anytime I'm not advocating or engaging for EOU, frankly, I feel guilty. Um, and, and so it, it can be pretty consuming uh, at times, obviously, but it's a wonderful thing, uh, obviously, to, to be leading an institution like this with great students and a great team that, that works here as well. Nice. So you came from, from Boise Cascade uh, and you were very successful there. What, 
and then you jump into this education arena. I mean, how has that journey been? What was that like? Uh, I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, you go from a corporation where you're really not in touch with the customer to where you're having lunch with the customer. I mean, I don't know, talk about, and I know that finances have been a very significant part of what you have brought to the picture, financial stability. I don't know, maybe talk a little bit about that transition and some of that stuff that you brought from the corporate world into uh, EOU. Yeah, and I could take that so many different directions. I know you could, yeah. You teed that up. But, yeah. Uh, um, you know, I think most people know I was born and raised uh, in Eastern Oregon, um, born in Grand Run Hospital, frankly. So I, I live all of, you know, half a mile from where I was born, raised out on a farm uh, in Palmer Valley, north of Elgin. So went through, uh, up through Elgin all my years, other than when I uh, lived overseas for a year and uh, went to EOU um, and got a fantastic education at Eastern, had the opportunity to live out my dream playing college athletics. And so obviously, you know, your, your alma mater, um, especially one like EOU that connects so strongly with you as an individual um, has deep meaning for for me, in, in my case, given the impact it had on my life. And so I've always been connected. I was on the foundation. I'm um, really paying attention. And then, then as, you know, leading the inland region for Boise Cascade, I worked for Boise for 20 years. And, and uh, as an employer, the one of the largest uh, in the area, the importance of EOU was, was front and center in terms of us hiring employees, um, being part of a vibrant, vibrant community and such. And so, um, I had a lot of intersects with EOU. I, uh, like I mentioned, I was on the foundation trying to raise money for uh, Eastern. And, you know, Eastern, Eastern's in that space as an institution that uh, if you think of it from a, a career aspect, it's, it's frankly a stepping stone. It's, um, it's a place that if, if uh, someone, an executive has career aspirations, probably going to move on to a larger institution and such. And Eastern suffered uh, from that to a certain extent. Um, we had a history where we had some university presidents, uh, President Dave Gilbert, who was the president when I was a student, um, that was at Eastern, not for professional advancement and such. And so as an outsider um, and alum and on the foundation, I was seeing Eastern go th through a lot of challenges. Um, a lot of mission drift at times and strategy drift with changes in leadership and such. And as a, as a business uh, leader, I was frustrated because I thought Eastern could perform better. As a community member and alum, I was frustrated because it was uh, causing disruption uh, um, when Eastern would go into financial challenges and such and be laying off or wasn't creating the opportunity for students that I thought it could. So it got me starting to think, but frankly, there were other things going in my personal life. I won't go into, you know, back to my family and decisions I was going to make and my career path with Boise Cascade that for the first time, um, when president Davies, uh, transitioned away from Eastern, um, I kind of opened my eyes to other possibilities than working at Boise Cascade, uh, which I, I just didn't do that. I, some of us would say we bleed green. I love that company. I loved what we did. I love the people that work in our, in, in the operations of Boise Cascade. Um, but I felt, you know, it was a calling for me uh, to come to Eastern. I wasn't sure I was going to get the job. So it was a bit of a risk in that aspect because it's a very public process. Um, and I was fortunate enough to uh, be asked to do this. Um, it's not a stepping stone for me. People ask if I'm moving on to another university. I have no interest in that. Um, my interest, if I'm a president of the university, is being a, a president at Eastern. Um, I love this place. I love our, our mission in terms of serving rural communities, first and foremost. Um, and I love the students we serve. And I feel compelled to provide the same opportunity to underserved student populations that uh, any any one of us that may have, you know, the, the benefit of, of more uh, access and Eastern can do that. Um, 
it's a, it's specially positioned. So I just wanted to, it, you know, sounds kind of cliche, I guess, but give back to a certain extent. I've been blessed with some gifts um, in terms of leadership and such. And, and so I, I, I wanted to, to, to do what I could in that regard. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and the word calling that you used in there is, that is incredibly significant. A lot of people don't understand that. You know, it's, it goes way beyond a job. It's, it's, it's the reason why you said earlier that uh, even in your private time, you have difficult not promoting and talking about Eastern because it's a part of who it is that you are. Yeah. 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 I yeah. don't have like a lot of, of outside of athletics. I don't have like a huge amount of engagement with EOU people, but I can tell you one thing you, the, it starts at the top and, and I see it every single day with these kids. It, the culture is so much different. The culture is so good at EOU right now. I mean, they treat each other good. You can look at their social media. doesn't matter what team it is. They're just promoting each other and, and cheering each other on and it's just different and and i love it man i love it yeah i you know to your point dodzy i know you focus on on athletics i'm a huge proponent of athletics people know that of course some some think i'm i'm too uh pro athletics um what i love about eou athletics and again i experienced it as a as a student athlete as well is it's it's um, I think it finds the right balance for college athletics, frankly. I, um, I don't want to go down this path too much, but I, I'm concerned about D1 um, athletics and where it's going, uh, you know, especially the, you know, the, the footballs and basketballs. Um, I, I worry about losing the purpose behind why we have athletics at a university. Yeah. Um, nothing to get, you know, maybe the model needs to change. I, I want students to have those opportunities, obviously. And, and like anybody, I love watching college football, you know, at the highest level. Um, I just worry about where that balance is. And at Eastern, I think we have the right balance. I think, frankly, NAIA um, athletics has the right balance of truly a student athlete. We, we, we're competitive. I mean, we have extremely good athletes, so it's not about oh, just participation. Um, but at, as you know, people here at the game, we're, we we take seriously at Eastern the champions of character um, component. It's more about winning uh, on the court. Uh, it's about really developing the whole person and the the student athlete. And again, you talk about starting at the top. I I arguably have one of the best, if not the best, athletic director. Uh, in the NAIA, uh, we're blessed. You know, she could go elsewhere and do great things um, uh, in a in a heartbeat. Um, but again, she has a calling. She's connected to this community. Angie has just done a fantastic job of of building um, our athletics department. And and you know, in 2014-15, the year before I came in, uh, we had on campus about 220, 225 student athletes. Um, today, uh, we have 425. Yep. We've grown athletics. Um, and the other side of that that's important is, again, in terms of how it's the whole, it's a holistic component. You know, fall term, our athletics, all all athletes fall term, finish the, the term with a 3.22 uh, GPA. Um, wow. Our student athletes um, uh, do better in the classroom than our average student body. Uh, it's because of how our coaches intentionally work with them. Understand it's not, again, just about competition. It's about our student athletes being successful for that next next step in their life. And in the meantime, let's let's go out and beat College of Idaho. <laughs> um, Please, you know, I just, every I just, time. Hey, there's no one you can talk to Angie anytime, you know, being being a former athlete. Um, it's it's uh, C of I is always in my radar because um, they always have they have they have great, you know, great athletics, great tradition. And uh, we're building great tradition here, too. And and so that's fantastic. And I'll, I'll tell you what you mentioned, breaking a 10 game 
losing streak, uh, which I'm so proud of Chris. I, I'm happy for him. Oh, his, so am I. His He's first year um, coming in and, and taking taking this on. I was so happy for him Tuesday night. But uh, um, I think if I'm accurate, I didn't ask Angie. This is 17 straight Angie's beat C of I. Um, yeah. You, holy smoke. That, that in itself speaks volumes about Angie's coaching capability and what she does with, with our, our women uh, basketball oh, team year it. in and year out. Because, uh, again, C of I is, is a fantastic uh, uh, program. Yeah, the women, they've won seven in a row and 11 of 12. They're, they're rolling right now. They're, they're definitely good, R- real good. I had something and then you made, and then it, it lost, I lost it. Dang it. I was going to say, <laughs> I think it was about, was it about C of I? It doesn't matter. Well, if, I'll, if it pops in my brain, I'll, I'll say it. Well, Tom, why don't you talk about a little bit about, I mean, you guys are building a new athletic complex. Talk about that. And then also some of the other new things, new programs and things that you've started over the last uh, few years that are significant yeah so one thing i which it's which i'm fine so you're you're referencing the field house um that we're building this is really exciting for us um as as i keep telling my team it's um and and everyone i talk to it's it's not an athletics facility um yes we're going to use it extensively through our athletics group but it's much bigger than that thank you yeah yeah, it, you know, we live in Eastern Oregon. We talked about the weather this morning uh, yeah. already. And um, if you think about the time our students are on our campus, a significant portion of that time, we've got snow on the ground, it's cold outside. And uh, of any place, if you think in our conference, uh, maybe Great Falls, Montana, um, uh, <laughs> arguably needs needs one of these. Uh, but um this is a facility that uh, we really want to provide for all of our students. So our res life students, you know, who are living on campus, uh, provide them a much greater space to be active uh, during the winter. Um, we are moving our health and human performance um, degree program over there, which uh, one of the pathways to a physical therapy program. It's a program that's growing. In fact, it's our uh this year the number one most popular degree program so it'll be based there we're moving our faculty over there we have three uh classrooms um that we're building specifically focused on really uh creating lab space for that program as it continues to grow and connecting it to this great facility our outdoor adventure programs moving over there you know for years it's it's a phenomenal program um my catch is just uh, taken that and run over the last uh, six years, seven years, I guess. Um, and now he's going to have a space. He and his team are going to have a space that really highlights that. And with our climbing structure and those kinds of things, again, indoor where it's climate controlled, our students can be active uh, during these times. And then, you know, longer term, I really hope, um, you know, of course I'm around the community. I see people walking in the mornings as I'm going to work, uh, former um, uh, uh, employee of Eastern, I, I drive by Doug Campbell. He was walking on the street because our sidewalks are covered up and that kind of stuff. Uh, absolutely love Doug. And I'm, I'm sitting there thinking, Doug, next year you're going to be walking laps inside our field house at 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. in the morning where you're safe. You're not going to fall down. Um, and so opening up for community use, uh, uh, given it's tremendous, it's a tremendous asset. So I'm really excited about getting that up and going. It's a little behind schedule for a variety of reasons, but uh, we're ready to have this going this fall um, for, for our campus and our community. Really excited. Tom, Tom let me add something into that, too. It's going to get our wrestling team practicing up at the university, too, instead of at an at a, um, old uh, auto body shop. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for mentioning that, because I, I, I that's that's one of the primary reasons I advocated for the field house. You know, as we added those programs was we want wrestling back up on campus. Um, the, both those programs have been phenomenal. Uh, Dustin and, and uh, Carlene have done a great job leading those two teams. And uh, uh, so we are excited about getting that that gym that our 
our indoor track and field folks use today uh, back to uh, being used for for wrestling. I love telling the story to like all the the new athletes about how the the practice gym used to be the pool and the you know like the very, the very first pickup games I ever played in my life were in that the gym where the uh, the track and field team practices now. Yep, that's how it was <laughs> back in my day. <laughs> yeah, well, you're not that much older than me. I, I, I'm deceptively old, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's cool. Thank you so much for helping define that in a broader context, because, you know, in that I I can see why that would be a really great tie to the community. Um, you know, because I mean, I I serve on a number of boards. I'm the president of La Grande Main Street. And, you know, probably every third meeting we talk about how can we tie you know, how can we tie LeGrand to EOU? Because there are times that it, I mean, EOU kind of functions as its own little city, town. I mean, you, um, I mean, it's just the reality of what you guys are, you know? And um, and so the that tie between the community, the bigger community of LeGrand and EOU has to be intentional. Um, and... Um, and that, I mean, I can see how that would just be a great benefit. Yeah, I, I'll i kind of take this two ways. One, um, I always have kind of big dreams and then figure out, okay, how, how, how can we be moving towards that? And, you know, some of those really outrageous dreams come to fruition. Others, uh, for one reason or another, don't necessarily. And I, I would say the field house is an, is an example of this in terms of connectivity with the community. So if you think about the location of that facility and we have the Blue Mountain Conference Center within very easy walking distance, um, our vision for the future is we actually have a, a road that connects in and comes into 12th, uh, both on uh, I Avenue and next to the Blue Mountain Conference Center. Um, now, th this is conceptual, so don't yeah. run away and oh, this is going to happen. Um, but connecting those two assets um, together, as, as you think about what could we potentially do as a community um, to attract uh, uh, events um, on occasion um, to this, this area. And then, you know, um, not that you ever want this to happen, but if you think about um, uh, emergency response um, to natural disasters and such, what an asset to have. Again, um, tremendous square footage undercover with facilities that are necessary. Um, you look at the wildfires on the west side um, that occurred and communities being um, basically dislocated. Um, we have an asset here in eastern Oregon that if we're intentional about planning um, with the university, with food services and all this, where if we had that, which again, God forbid we ever have to use it, but having that in our hip pocket is, is just fantastic. So if we think big like that, we're always planning. Um, I think we can do great things for the community. And then to your point, you know, I think we have a great relationship with uh, our, our local community. Um, of course, we have to think more broadly than just LeGrand because we don't just serve LeGrand. But um, I'll take this opportunity to just highlight, you know, an iconic portion of our campus that I keep trying to find avenues to fix and that's our grand staircase yep. right and yep. again my my big vision uh, what I'd love to see is our grand staircase um, renovated uh, it's an again an architectural icon in the state and frankly in the nation um, and then through planning and work with the city, be intentional about driving some kind of connectivity corridor from our grand staircase to downtown. So that kind of becomes a, a, a used path for uh, whether it's tourists to community members, to students, it's the closest physical connection between our university and uh, the downtown Adams Avenue. Um, and I just, you know, it's not going to happen overnight, but again, with intention and thought, uh, I would hope that we could, uh, um, go that way. Uh, frankly, I'd love to have a hotel that's somewhere right down in that, that, you know, kind of where the 
travel lodge, the local, those things um, continue to think about how do we how do we think about our community um, connecting its various assets and and I know the city's working on a south south Lagrand to downtown corridor eastern's part of that um, I'm excited about thinking about ways to physically connect beyond just the you know the human uh, connection because I think that'll drive more human connection between uh, the university and our community nice. that's Love cool it. and it, and a lot of people they might not even know the that staircase even exists because it's been it's been closed for so many years. You only have access to it through that immediate uh, community, that that rural area. You got to kind of know where it's at, you know, but it is beautiful. It's amazing. Yeah. 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 yeah it's, it, it's unique. It's on the historic register. Um, and, you know, we've we've had challenges at the state level because, of course, it's hard to connect it specifically to um our educational mission. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's, it is the gateway to our university. Yep. If you look at our history, um, people think of the front of Enloe as being the one that faces um, the campus. That's the back of Enloe. The front of Enloe faces mm -hmm. the community that was intentionally designed mm -hmm. that way. Um, and we've lost that. And, right. and I hope during my time here at Eastern, uh, we're able uh, to, to fix that. Uh, it's going to take more than just uh, Eastern advocating and pushing for it. it. It will ultimately take a broad community effort to uh, make that happen. And I know with all the, you know, other important things that, you know, we need to spend taxpayer money on, it, it becomes a challenge. It's like a staircase, really. Um, but sometimes symbols are extremely important. I, um, I agree. And, and, uh, it is. It's more than a staircase, in, in my opinion, and, and we've got to get that message um, out so that we can get that fixed. Well, cool. Love it. Well, Tom, we have we have a little bit of a surprise for you, and uh -oh. uh, yeah, and and you'll have to thank your wife for this. But we have a guest that's going to jump in with us, someone you haven't seen in a while. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron Buick, oh, my gosh. Rockstar. <laughs> How you doing, Tom? Uh, I love you, man. Good to see you. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. Good to see you, too. <laughs> I spent a lot of time on that grand staircase. I love that. Like, I used to work out there all the time. It's beautiful. So I, I, I lived on 8th Street. So, I mean, I, I, I grew up right there. Yeah. It's a good so good so one of Aaron, why don't you tell us how you you and Tom know each other? Give us a little bit of the background there. So way back prehistoric days, Tom and I uh, were teammates there at Eastern Oregon. Played basketball together and spent a lot of time riding around in buses and vans and getting to know each other and working out and all those things. So, and I love competing with them and it was just a lot of fun razzing them and. <laughs> all that stuff. I, I, he's always a person of focus. I knew that he, had, he, he was very driven and all that stuff. So it was just fun and fun to be around him. And he was a man of integrity and all the, those things. So it was good. And we, we had a lot of fun together. I wish we still could play, but we can't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you could. You it's not play. very good. <laughs> you're, are, you're the head coach at Staten? Yes, sir. Yep. Oh, nice. Okay, yep. good. Yeah. So I've been here three yeah. years. How yeah, long? Aaron's... Three years. Three years. Nice. Yeah. Aaron's had a, a great career. Um, head coach at William Jessup, an NAI school. Um, went up to uh, Trinity. Uh, Tr Trinity Western, yeah, um, up in Canada. Um, his son's going to hopefully uh, be on on the court uh, Friday with Bushnell um, playing playing there. I'm not quite sure, you know, why I picked Bushnell versus Eastern, but you know, sometimes <laughs> sometimes kids have to learn the hard way. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. Bush Bushnell is a great school, um, but. Uh, and his wife, you know, Aaron, Aaron didn't say his wife uh, actually was a roommate of mine for a while. And, and so uh, 
Uh, Aaron was over quite a bit for some reason. Can't figure out why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, it was fun times. So, yeah, Tom was a good roommate to my wife, and she really enjoyed those times for sure. And it uh, being around Tom made her study. So she didn't like to study very much. Tom made her study. So. Uh, was was Tom a book? Just like a book in the books all the time. Or? No, he goofed around a lot and <laughs> he played tricks on people, all those things. But like, you know, when it was time to work, he was he was very focused. He was a good example for me, for sure. And he's a little younger from it than me too. But I was like, you know, if I could be as driven as him, it would help me. So it took me a while to get out of Eastern, taking PE classes and stuff like that. And, Tom Tom did really well there. So. Who who was the basketball coach when you guys were there? Um, we played for Ciancio. Um, yeah, and then and then Gauthier was he's yep. there at the end. So so split. Yeah, yep. and that was he right before before Furman. Yes, Af yeah. Furman came after us. Yeah, yeah, but but your second coach, I, I have a hard time saying his name. He's right before Furman. Yeah. Got there. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 Nice. So, and and you want to date yourself? What years were those at EOU? <laughs> I, I was there eighty-seven to ninety-two. At Tom, I, were you there 88? 89? 80, 89 to ninety-four. Yeah. Um, played uh, through uh, ninety. So I played three in my four years. Um, you're you're talking about. So I came in on CNCO's last year. He. He recruited me um, to Eastern, and then uh, uh, Gauthier came in. Um, he was the coach for three years. I only played two of those years because uh, my academics um, didn't match up with practice and everything. It's As people know, it's a huge commitment to play college athletics. I came back after my sophomore year, played my, my junior and senior year and then we were in a coaching change again i was just like man like another coach learning a new system and and all that and i i chose not to uh to play that last year so did you get did, did you play with bubba yes one year i love i love love uh two years I two years bubba. oh man yeah, bubba's I, my guy i you know we'll still joke about it i always guarded him um uh you know talk about an athlete um i have i have a lot of gifts but i, I received average athletic gifts <laughs> so i had to place <laughs> I, I had to figure it out you know and Ed, frankly aaron's a lot like that you know a student of the game and really understanding you know how, how to outsmart your your opponent and such and and so i i was always guarding bubba to give him give him a hard time and i always told him i was better than him of course um <laughs> look look who's in the hall of fame though <laughs> <laughs> oh that's funny man bubba's bubba's uh, about to retire i think i mean he took that new job out there at, uh oia he's he's the boss um but i think he's gonna retire he's been talking about like wanting to go do like uh motivational speaking all over the u.s which would be perfect for him so so bubba and tom and and my my wife and i we all lived in the same complex and stuff so we had some some good times and <laughs> that's yeah. awesome yeah it was, it was really cool good experience uh, well yeah. Aaron, never got in trouble never got in trouble yeah. 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 Well, yeah aaron aaron do you want to share any uh character stories or any stories that, any, that you can think of that would be appropriate not embarrass Tom too much. <laughs> yeah, don't 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 like axe murder him <laughs> on the show. Well, I mean, I remember the day when I got a couple things. One, I remember the day when Tom, you know, he he made that decision that you know, hey, I'm gonna make sure and do my school, and I just can't work this out. And I remember him telling me it was. I mean, it it hurt me quite a bit that he chose to do that because, you know, he was. Uh, a, a good example for our team and he just worked super hard and um, just was a great teammate and stuff. And, and I got to know Tom just, you know, in his, in his family a little bit. And I don't know if you guys know this about Tom, but he has like a scar on his thigh 
and you know i'd see it and i'd be like tom what the heck is that and he he got a javelin right in the middle of his thigh in high school just walking out to track practice and you know he just he, you had to ask him about it you know never told you about it but i mean that's that's crazy to me that he, he has war wounds from track <laughs> so getting hit out. by a javelin yeah no kidding so but my yeah, question was, would be why was he walking where they're throwing the javelins he must have been reading a book or something you know? <laughs> <laughs> love it yeah i was but, in the right <laughs> Yeah, I, I think the person who threw it was was actually an Eastern athlete too. She, I remember. So. Oh wow! But that's awesome. Yeah. Anyways, it was good. We had we had a good time, and I mean, it, like Eastern's a special place to me and my wife, of course, and um, and even my kids. You know, when we go back, Tom is just a blessing to us, and my kid still has his Eastern Oregon t-shirt and stuff like that and he gets in trouble for wearing it at Bushnell quite a bit but, you know, <laughs> he's Eastern's a part of him too so yeah it's awesome yeah so yeah sorry about the bell there I, I have classes and stuff like that and so yeah go to, figure you're nah, good <laughs> yeah. you're yeah. good yeah so well well Aaron thanks so much for jumping on with us and yeah. uh and uh, Emily said it's been like five years since you guys have seen each other or something like that. And so, yeah, it's been a while. Tom came up to yeah. Trinity and we had a really, really good visit. It was, I was thankful to see him. And, um, and, You're good. You know, Emily's a special gal too. Tom married up for sure. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's good to meet you guys. And I, I appreciate yeah. this. And Tom, keep in touch. We need to go shoot some hoops soon. <laughs> Absolutely. Maybe one of these times I'll make see you see a Bushnell Eastern game and come visit or something like that. Great to see you. All right, guys. Take care. Take man. care. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Well, that was fun. Yeah, that was <laughs> awesome. Yeah, not not what I was expecting for sure. Aaron's, <laughs> you know, Aaron's an example. You talk. We talk about Bubba. Um, you know, I was blessed. People know that my my father worked here at Eastern. Uh, for much of his career. Um, so I get to hear all the stories of, of uh, uh, students from way back in the day. And you look at the impact of graduates at EOU have across the state, frankly, across this nation. And that, oh, that just yeah. motivates me too. We just, we just have real, you know, do, do we have a bunch of CEOs and such? Uh, no, we, we have some, but, but no, we have, we have people out there really contributing to their communities in so many ways. Aaron's an example. Bubba's another one. I could just go on a laundry list yes. of, of, you know, the wonderful people that, that graduate from Eastern and go on and, and impact others in such a positive way. Yeah, Tom, every basketball coach in the GOL is an EOU grad. Hmm. And and all of them except for one played basketball. Jabron, uh, Attila, Corolla. Tavis Crittenden, all EOU grads. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. They stick around too. That's the, uh, yeah. I love the fact that we get EOU grads that stick around and, and coach here. And, and it's, it's phenomenal. It, it really is. Well, and that kind of circles back to where we started as far as why it was really important to get kids back on campus learning. And that is, is that, there's the uniqueness of EOU is to be experienced on campus and it's the culture. It's the place where we are. It's the community. It's all of that stuff. And if your learning is just being done online, then I don't know. A lot of that culture just is really hard to communicate. It's really hard to connect. Yeah. I, you know, I believe firmly in online. I believe right. firmly in the traditional on campus. Um, it, it's really about meeting students where they are. And so we have a lot of, uh, I think we have an excess of 700 students that are over 35 years old. Right. Um, and and most of those students are online. And, and there's a reason. It's it's because they're living their lives. They're in their community. They have jobs. They're single parents. They're what, 
you know, and they're looking for that upward mobility um, that a, a bachelor's degree brings. And Eastern provides that again, it, you know, it's meet you where you are. It's not about us. It's about you. How can we serve you and help help move you uh, in the direction you want to go? Um, and then that that student that comes to campus. Yep. It's that they're at a different place. That community is so important, that experiential learning through co-curricular activities, whether it be athletics, performing arts, student government, student club activities. We're looking to create that dynamic. And uh, for me, it's kind of personal because that's that's where I grew, you know again, through student, through athletics, but I was involved in uh, ASEOU for my five years um, in, in different capacities, totally transformed my life. Like I said, I'm an introvert. I could not get up in front of people and talk. Um, I do whatever you wanted on the basketball court. Give me the ball. I wanted the shot. Give me the last second free throw. But um, Eastern, Eastern brought me, Eastern developed me as a leader. Um, and it's because of the experience I had on campus, the people that were wrapped around me that when I screwed up, they lifted me up. When I wasn't going as hard as I could, they said, you can do more. Um, they were, you know, motivating. And, and uh, that's, that's what I want to do for every student. Um, I've, I've been privileged to have what I have uh, here uh, through my experience. And I want to you know, pass that on. We can do that through our, our university. Awesome. Phenomenal. Good stuff. Yeah. Well, well, Tom, anything else that you want to hit or select? Uh, uh, you started a new f farming program. I mean, that's an over, I maybe dial in on that. Some of the, the, the new recent highlights that you want to hit before we take off. Yeah. There's so many things to talk about <laughs> uh, at, at EOU. Um, great things. And there are great things going on academically. I, I, I chose this cup intentionally. Um, uh, you know, we launched our ag entrepreneurship degree, um, or we're launching that our first first cohort will show up this fall. Um, and and you know that's an extension of our strategy and our, our university being designated as Oregon's rural university and living to that and being connected with the region that we serve. Um, but I think what's unique about that program and other programs that we're offering is um, it, it's not just classroom learning. So uh, within our strategic plan, we've been clear about we want every student to experience their learning through applied learning. So outside of the class and uh, the, the AE program is specifically designed to have students out in the laboratory of Eastern Oregon. Uh, using it as a classroom. And so we're excited about that. But frankly, other programs that were, you know, we've added a number of programs. We didn't have accounting. I kept hearing accounting, I think, was our fourth most popular degree program now. We didn't even have it six years ago. Wow. Um, so we're, oh, we're really wow. listen, we're listening to what are the needs out there. Our faculty are responding to that, developing programs that make sense, that connect and uh, um, moving forward our college of education we we have tremendous need in the education field um they are responding they're developing programs that that uh, are meeting needs as well so i see a lot of growth opportunity there i just see a lot of upside for our university we have some challenges no question um but we're working through those and and the whole team whether it's academics the co-curricular uh, athletics. Um, they're focused on together it's possible and and serving the student um, to help them be successful going forward. And that that makes it uh, so we're we're moving in the right direction. That's awesome. Well, Tom, thanks so much for being on and and you're welcome to come back anytime if you have something that you want to highlight or uh, we have another guest that we can surprise you with. And so, <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, my pleasure. I appreciate what you all are doing too. Um, you know, you're taking a risk in terms of investing your time and capital and, and doing this. I hope it's, it's uh, uh, getting the returns you're after and it's generating, you know, the, the outcomes that, that you're targeting. Pretty cool yeah. that you're doing this. Cool. Well, Thanks so much. And uh, 
uh, we we appreciate Emily and kind of assisting in the background with this morning. So yeah, and I'm gonna uh, get her. <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah. <laughs> no, awesome. I and I, you know, I mean, I I appreciate your leadership. I mean, that's the thing Thank that you. I I see. Uh, the, you know, it's just it it makes a huge difference in a community and in an institution and. Um, and I, I see that, you know, you guys getting back into the classroom. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I see be that just businesses. I mean, you have to work through challenges. You just can't accept the no all the time, or that's not going to happen. I mean, you have to, you have to find a workaround and, and that determination uh, comes from leadership. So yeah. thanks so much. Yeah. I'm Appreciate glad you're it. here. You. And I'm glad Thank you have you. a calling and you're not looking for a job somewhere else. So yeah, thanks absolutely. so much. Yeah. No. All right. Well. we'll talk to you soon. All, All right, right, man. There was not much happened today, like on this day. Uh huh. So I only found two things that were worthy. Like, so on this day, January 27th, 1948, the first tape recorder was ever sold. Really? 1948. Yeah, you want to hear a funny story? My grandpa didn't like writing. Uh -huh. He was in Vietnam, so he would he would record himself talking to my grandmother. Yeah, and and I got I got those tapes. That's funny. Well, so yeah. I'll tell you a quick little story. So I was like three, four years old, and we were a poor family, but my dad was kind of geeky, techy like me, and so he he got a tape recorder. And so they had and tape he, recorders when you were three. Yeah, they did. What reel to reel? Yeah, reel to reel tape. That's what we're talking about, right? No, not but not these little tapes, did they? No, cassettes weren't out yet. This were, oh, were okay. these were reel to reel tapes. Reel yeah. to reel. Okay, yeah, yeah. And so he and he loved listening to Jim Reeves. And so I don't know how he got tapes of Jim Reeves, but yeah. And so, but I figured out how to record it, you know, and so. So we were listening one night to Jim Reeves and right in the middle of the recording, you hear this testing one, two, three, testing one. Oh, two, I've three. heard that you've told me this story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you recorded over his tape. Yeah, I had recorded over his car and he kind of looked over at oh, me like, man. yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Anyhow. That's awesome. Yeah, that's all. Hey, BC, why don't eggs tell jokes? Why don't eggs tell jokes? Because they'd crack each other up. <laughs> in 1984, on this day. So this is the only other one I found. Uh, all the rest of them were like sports or boring. Uh, 1984, on this day, was when Michael Jackson caught his hair on fire during the Pepsi commercial. Oh, wow. Remember that? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I Everybody remembers that. It, yep. Yeah. it's uh, it, it, And then let's go to, let's look and see what the number one song in the country so this would be what 1962 on this day, huh? Um, the Peppermint Twist by Joey D and the Starlighters. I don't know that song. I don't think I do either. Yeah, well, there, there it is. And then <laughs> finally, the quote for the day. There it is, BC. You can't stop the waves, but you can learn to you surf. surf. <laughs> John Kabat-Zinn. You can't stop the waves. But you can learn to surf. Yeah, that's a good that's a good message for like the topic that we talked about with Tom is like, yeah, just, you got to overcome. You got to push gotta on. Just ride it. You got to yep. ride it. Yep. Awesome. All righty, good stuff. It's Thursday. Oh, Thank it's actually yeah the pre Friday. It's the yeah. party before Friday. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Eastern Tuesday. Oregon, for tuning in today. We'll see you next Tuesday. Yep. Bye.